Hola. Today is Saturday. This is the last Saturday in January 2021. It's the 30th. And this month is going to be out of here. Mm -hmm. Come Monday. Come Monday morning. So, my goodness. How was your week? Did you have a good week? Did you have a prosperous week? Did you check some things off of your list of things to do? Yeah. I hope you did. I hope you did. I'm um, washing dishes. You can hear the water running in the background. Which, by the way, I love that sound. I love the sound of running water. It just soothes my heart. So, what are we going to talk about today? Today, I had to pray and ask God to remind me of this, by the way, because when I was kind of having some quiet time this morning and praying that same prayer, well, Lord, what am I going to talk about? Uh, something popped up in my spirit, and, you know, I didn't write it down. And I, when I was talking to make the video, I was like, oh, gosh. What was the topic again? I said, Lord, please bring it back to me. And then I said, well, okay, if this is what I'm supposed to talk about, then Lord, you will bring it back to my remembrance. And if it's not, then I'll talk about something else. Guess what? He brought it back to my remembrance. So that tells me that this is what he wants me to talk about today. And what I'm going to talk about is people with strong personalities. Um, I'm going to delve into that. I've mentioned it before, but I I'm going to read dig into that. How do you define a person with a strong personality? What does that mean to you? I'll tell you what it means to me. A person with a strong personality, in my opinion, is someone who is very opinionated, very strong in their stance, very stubborn in their stance, um, and sometimes they defend their stance with sarcasm, anger, control, and manipulation. It's funny. You can have a person who's soft-spoken, who has a strength in them, but I wouldn't necessarily define that person as having a strong personality. I would just say that person knows what they want. They have um, a good, strong sense of you know who they are and where they're going and what they want out of life. That's how I would define it. But a strong personality is a strong personality, whether it comes wrapped in a sarcastic package or someone who's sweet and soft-spoken. You can have a sweet voice and have a soft, gentle voice and still possess those qualities. So, I'm going to dig into this a little bit today. That's one thing I can say about myself. Um... I never defined myself as a person having a strong personality. I've always defined myself as um, a person who doesn't let other people make up my mind for me. You know, it's funny how we can view ourselves a certain way, but when you ask someone to describe you, they may not describe you the way you would describe yourself. And that goes back to people's perception. But I'm talking about this thing with strong personalities because I have encountered several people, connections, relationships um, within the past few years that were with people who I would describe as having strong personalities. And up until I started encountering them so frequently, I would do my best to avoid people like that because I didn't want to deal with the control, the manipulation, the sarcasm. And I avoided it so much that it has become the growth opportunity that God has been working on in my life. So it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Uh, some people that I've had to uh, exchange with, deal with, work with, you know, 
interact with, their personalities have been such that I have literally said to God, okay, this must be your way of telling me that you want me to get out of this particular environment because now I'm finding myself dealing with this personality and that personality. And what the Lord is showing me is that I was completely wrong. It's time, what it really is time for is for me to stop running away from that personality type that I describe as strong. You know? So I've asked God to help me to change my perception and to really see the strong people that are in my life as they are. Learn what it is that God wants me to learn about them or from them. And just, you know, have the right spirit. It's been uncomfortable. I won't lie to you. It's been uncomfortable. You know why? Because I'm the kind of person I don't like to argue with people. I don't like uh, tension and contention. I don't like the disagreement that may come if I have a difference of opinion with someone. And some people, you know, they're masterful at ruling their own spirit. So if they disagree with you, um, you don't really see them change the way they treat you. But there are other people who have that, excuse me, who have that manipulation and control thing going on with their strong personality that they will literally, like, roll their eyes at you, want to cuss you out, suck their teeth, be nasty, try to get other people to come against you, all because they can't control you. And that, there's another name for that. That's called like a Jezebel spirit. So, you know, I don't know how thin the line is between a controlling person and a person with the Jezebel spirit. Um, that's if there's a line at all. Or should I say a person with a strong personality and the Jezebel spirit. I don't know how much of a line there is between those two. And, you know, I know the best thing for us to do before we start pointing our fingers at somebody else is look in the mirror. So, I'm asking God, you know. Again, I'm on this journey of asking God to show me myself. So, God, show me. Am I that kind of person that I've been running away from? Do other people feel the need to run away from me? Because they see me as a person with a strong personality, you know. Do I come across in the very way that I uh, don't want to be? Don't want to be perceived? You know, don't want to be treated? Am I that kind of person? So, I've just been really stepping back and looking at these strong personalities. I think the reason why... I have always avoided people with strong personalities is because coming up, dealing with certain kinds of personalities and personality traits in the, the adults that I had to be around, not all of them, but some of them, uh, they had those same kind of personality traits. And again, me being transparent, I was always that person who wanted to please you know, didn't want anybody mad at me. Didn't want anybody disapproving of something I did. And if they disapproved of it, then I interpreted that as meaning I was a bad person or that I was wrong. It didn't necessarily cause me to change what I was doing. And I think that's a unique thing about me. You know, it's a weird combination to have been both a people pleaser and a person who didn't allow didn't allow others to control my actions or control what I did and didn't allow others treatment of me to make me change my mind that's a unique combination of traits but like I said having grown up that way um, I just told myself you know when I got grown or whatever I wouldn't deal with people who had that personality trait but what if the very connections that God wants me to make concerning the things I'm praying for, concerning what he wants to do in my life, concerning how he wants to sharpen me and using iron to do it. What if it comes wrapped up in a package called a strong personality? If I continue to run from those relationships and connections, I'll never be stretched and learn how to deal with that personality type. This has been um, 
a challenge for me. I'll be honest with you. It's been challenging. I have literally had to ask God to show me. I mean, I, you know, instead of just looking at the people with strong personality traits and, you know, having my opinion about them, I've been asking God, okay, I view this person this way. This person does this. This person does that. What is it about this person that annoys me? Why does this person get under my skin like this? Why does this person... Um, why is this person so difficult and challenging for me to deal with? Why do I feel such a level of distrust? Is it that this person is reminding me of someone? Is that the Holy Spirit warning me that this person is not trustworthy? Like, what is it? I'm really trying to get to the bottom of it and understand what it is. And I think that's a great place to be because, you know, when we're constantly blaming other people and saying it's somebody else's fault and never take the time to look in the mirror and ask God to show us where we are and how we are in a situation, that's prideful. That's prideful. And it might not be just pride. It might be pride and fear, you know, the fear of being vulnerable to something that you feel uncomfortable with. And I believe with me, you know, having that mindset that I had, it was a mixture of both, pride and fear. But, again, if I'm going to grow up <laughs> in God, I have to stretch and grow and move past those things that make me uncomfortable and be willing to allow God to use the uncomfortable connections to show me what he wants me to see, teach me what he wants me to know. I be willing to learn those things getting better I'm making progress I'm not perfect but um the Bible says in all I get and get understanding sometimes I get that understanding by asking the people with the strong personality traits certain questions and sometimes I get that understanding by watching and observing them sometimes I get those answers to those questions by talking to God about whatever it is that I don't understand whatever I'm experiencing so that's my growth experience and tip for where I'm at right now. Yeah, how do you deal with people with strong personalities? Yeah, it's uh, natural for us to have that fight or flight mentality when we're uncomfortable or we're feeling threatened. And like I said, that was basically the way I dealt with people with that trait. I, I didn't deal with them. I dealt with them by not dealing with them. I almost absolutely had to. It was literally like on an as-needed basis. <laughs> I don't know what God wants to use me to teach people like that. And I don't know what he wants to use them to teach me. You know, I'm not always a teacher. I'm a student. And truth be told... You know, if your mouth is always open and you're always talking, you, know, you can't learn. So, I have had to humble myself in this area and just ask God to help me. Help me to have the right spirit. Help me to have the right focus. Help me to treat them the way that he wants me to treat them. Help me to see them for the gift that God has made them. You know, um can learn some things from people with strong personalities. Sometimes people like that have a capacity for leadership that um, I can learn from, honestly, because I don't know where I stand and where God would rank me as far as, you know, my capacity for leadership is concerned. But I do know that um, when a person has a strong personality, they usually don't tend they usually tend not to care about public opinion and how people feel about them. And, you know, I've had to grow a lot in that area. And I, I honestly, I admire that trait in people when they literally just don't care. And I'm not talking about, you know, when they don't care and then they're heartless. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when a person has a strength within that if you love them, great. If you don't love them, great. They're not losing any sleep over it. They're not going to um, 
try to make you like them. They're not going to try to be in control of, you know, the, re the, the interactions that you have with the people that they know. They're not going to try to dig and find information because they don't care what you think. They don't care what you say about them. I'm not that kind of person who wants to control um, interactions and, you know, I, I don't do all that. And I'm also not a boot licker or a butt kisser or a brown noser. You uh, figure out what that means if you don't know what it means. <laughs> Lose your imagination. I I'm not that person. So again, I think I have a unique combination of qualities and traits. While I'm not a boot licker and a butt kisser, I don't like when people are upset with me and I'm still that way. And I don't even know whether that's something to pray for God to change about me because honestly, I think it's a part of why God has... I think a part of why God has made me that way is because um, of who he wants me to come in contact with, wanting me to be, you know, a peacemaker and following peace. And maybe that's a part of the way that um, people learn whatever God wants to teach them through me. I don't know, but I'm definitely open and receptive to whatever lessons God wants to teach me through these interactions that I have with these people with them strong personalities mm -hmm. so on your journey I hope that you are open and receptive to God stretching you if you just tell him you'll follow his lead I promise you he won't lead you anywhere that will hurt you I promise you I made a statement in my last video about um, being so surprised at how long it takes me sometimes to realize that God is actually for me. I made that statement and you may say to yourself, well, what kind of Christian is that? You know, making all these videos and talking about God all the time and no matter what you talk about, you normally bring it back around to something concerning Bible and God and scripture. What kind of Christian is that? I'm going to tell you what kind of Christian that is called a work in progress. Everyone is dealing with something. Everyone has a growth opportunity or two that God is dealing with them about at any given time and you know the process never ends the Bible talks about us growing from faith to faith and glory to glory some people got that piece a long time ago some people never had to really work on that too much because they just have a natural ability to just trust God I'm someone who's had to learn to trust God and I'm still learning to trust him and the great thing about God, he doesn't love me any less than the person who never struggled to trust him. I know without faith it's impossible to please him. And I know that faith and trust, you know, they go hand in hand. But I can't do anything about the natural proclivity that I've had to not trust uh, in and of itself. I can't just wish it away. I have to be, I've had to be intentional about working on it. And I've done that and I continue to do that. So when I have these transparent moments, it's not always a comfortable thing for me to do, but I make myself transparent because again, I've said this many times, there's no way for me to really help you if I'm hiding things from you and acting like I've got it all together. I don't have it all together. I don't. I never will until I close my eyes on this side and wake up on the other side. And if God should uh, see fit to spare me of the horrors that are coming on this land, meeting him, meeting Jesus in the air, if I live to see that rapture moment. But um, it's refreshing to be transparent, you know, in life, especially when we're uncomfortable and getting back to the topic about strong personalities. Sometimes we're not transparent when we're uncomfortable, but God is teaching me how to be balanced in my transparency while dealing with people with strong personalities. I did a video back in December about a transparent moment that I had where I literally just cried and it was uncontrollable tears. It was an uncontrollable cry. Uncontrollable because it came out when I was having a conversation and I didn't expect it to come out, but I couldn't control it and I didn't see it coming and it would have been too late to stop it because it just came like a waterfall. It came like an avalanche. I was vulnerable in that moment. And in that video, what I talked about was, you know, that statement that people make 
Never let them see you sweat. Okay. Never let them see you sweat. Does that mean never let them see you be human? That has its place too. You know, there's a balance for everything. But I mean, if you're always going through your life and not ever being vulnerable, you know, I don't know. I guess it's up to the individual where they're comfortable. Some people are never comfortable letting people see them in that emotional state, letting people see them cry. Some people are not comfortable with that. I grew up being known as a crybaby, so I mean, <laughs> if you looked at me wrong, I would cry. I was just like that. I was. And um, I can't help that. That's just how I was. I can't change that about my past. I can't change that about my makeup. Uh, but what I can do is I ask the Lord to strengthen me and help me. And honestly, I cry a lot less than I used to. Trust and believe. And even with that, um, sometimes I cry at moments that are just not the most convenient, i.e. that time I described back in December. But, you know, I had to make peace with it because I needed that moment. I needed that time. And I received a level of tenderness and compassion from the person that otherwise I wouldn't have received. I wasn't doing the crocodile tear thing. You know, I wasn't trying to make myself cry. I literally just couldn't control my emotion. And I was trying to talk while crying. But I just, I couldn't contain it. <laughs> couldn't contain it. That person didn't judge me. That person didn't say to me, you know, you big cry baby. You know, that person was very tender, like I said. So, whatever that moment was intended to do in that connection, I believe that that uh, mission was accomplished. And whatever. So, you know, if you're one of those people who says, never let them see you sweat, if that's your mantra, if that's what you live by, if that's how you govern yourself, you know, who am I to say otherwise? I can't tell you how to live your life. All I can do is share the example of how I live my life and how I govern myself and how it's, you know, helped me. We're people. We're human. We hurt, you know. We're all on this earth. We're dealing with something that's painful. So many people have died of the coronavirus, and so many more will die from the coronavirus. And that's not a negative that's not intended to be just a negative statement. That's the truth. You know, until coronavirus is out of here, others will die. You know, when do we stop being so impersonable and learn how to just be vulnerable, you know? I don't know. That's just where I'm at right now. You may not agree. And, you know, you're entitled. People still have that stiff upper lip even now. And you know, like I said, that's your decision, that's your right. And like my grandma told me, she said, crying washes the soul. And it's very true. Sometimes you gotta let some tears come out. And then not feel guilty about it, you know? Don't hang your head about it. Whatever. That's my cents and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about today. Um, I hope that something was said or shared here that uh, that you enjoy, that you benefited from, that you learned something from. I hope that you give yourself permission to do some of those things. Give yourself permission to be vulnerable when you need to be vulnerable, you know, you have to use wisdom, you know, but be vulnerable, vulnerable where you can be and embrace those connections, those difficult connections that, um, that God allows you to have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't always be running from things and running from difficult personalities and running from certain connections and you know, feeling like you have to distance yourself all the time from people who are a certain mm -hmm. way. It's one thing if it's emotionally and spiritually unhealthy to be around them. You know, you have to guard your heart. 
But if it's one of those things you just can't help it, either they live in the same house with you, they work the same job as you, you see them when you go to the store, or whatever the source of the connection is, if you really can't get away from them, pray about that. That very well. And I'm putting dishes away so y'all still can hear me. That very well may be God's way of letting you see that he's got you in that connection because again he's wanting to do something through that connection and the longer you take to allow him to do what he's doing the longer it's going to take you to go through that process you know so just just be at peace about it all right so i'm just about finished in this kitchen here and got some things to take care of today but I hope that you enjoyed this video thank you for watching thank you for supporting thank you for subscribing thank you for commenting thank you for sharing and uh, I hope I will see you again soon until then Love yourself, be gentle with yourself, be honest and sincere. Sorry about the noise, <laughs> but be honest and sincere and just trust God, you know. He's got a plan for allowing everything that's happening, even the things that hurt, even the things you don't understand. And don't hide from who you are. You know, if you have a tender heart, if you're that person like me who used to cry a lot and, you know, was known as a cry baby and God had to strengthen you, it's not a reason to hang your head. It's not a reason to feel badly about anything. It's just that's the way God made you. You have a tender heart. And, you know, God made your heart tender like that for a reason. Some people, you know, they get annoyed when somebody cries. Because they don't like to see that level of what they call weakness or vulnerability. You have to know who to be around. And if the people in your circle make you feel bad for having the tender heart that God gave you, take a look at that. You know, if you're still that crybaby and you cry very easily, and if that's how you deal with stress and pain, and you come out of that feeling better then that's how God enables you not to hold on to stuff. Don't apologize for that. Anybody trying to make you feel guilty and bad for something that works for you? You know, if the, important, if the relationship that you have that person is important to you, then maybe you can take some time to explain to them, you know, that crying literally washes your soul and you literally get purged of those things that are intended to put you in bondage when you cry and release tears. If after you do that, they still try to condemn you, whatever, then you got some choices to make. You don't need to have anybody making you feel badly about who you are. And the flip side of that, that coin also exists. You don't want to be in your emotions and be crying all the time, you know. God gives us sustainability and strength to do what we have to do and go through what we have to go through. So, all things in balance. I didn't intend anything I said in this video to be taken out of context to mean that I'm supporting imbalance because I'm not. I'm just basically saying give yourself permission to be who and what you are. And whatever imbalances are there, ask the Holy Spirit to balance you out and he will. Now I'm really going to end this video. So I hope you have a great day and I hope you have a nice weekend. All right. Take care. Ta-ta. <gasps> Bye-bye.